Hey everybody, as you know, AI news and everything around it is going at a rapid pace. So I want to give you a brief update. And today I'll be covering everything from the EU AI Act amendments, uh, OpenAI's upcoming open source model, and a couple of more things. So let's get started. First on our list, it's the European Union's recent 144 page amendment to its AI Act. It's a proposal that aims to tighten the restrictions on AI companies especially the ones from the US. I got the whole amendment right here. I will link it in the description below so you can check it out for yourself. But what are the main points that it covers? Well, first off, there's the licensing requirement. The amendment proposes a ban on making AI models accessible in Europe without proper licensing. Now, what does that mean? That's kind of crazy because what if you develop a model and then it just ends up being there? I don't know, but we'll see. But in general, this is supposed to mean that uh, open source projects, large corporations, and even individual developers would need to obtain a license for their AI models in order to be used in Europe. Non-compliance could result in fines of up to $22 million or 4% of the company's revenue. That's pretty hefty. And here we go again, Europe, uh, way to go to stifle innovation. <laughs> the second point of the amendment deals with high risk AI projects. The bill demands that all high risk AI projects disclose information such as data sources, functionality and red teaming. And for those of you who don't know what red teaming is, it's basically if you develop a product or a software that then you ask a team of hackers to attack you in order to test your defenses. Uh, let me know if that's pretty much what it is in the comments below. Now, the AI community as a whole is obviously concerned with these amendments and it's fearing that those types of changes could hinder the innovation across Europe and hold developers liable for unlicensed models inevitably available in Europe. Like I said before, sometimes you just don't have control over who's what using, who's using your product where the bill hasn't passed yet but if it does it could set a precedent for other countries to follow and also breaking news we had sam altman just uh yesterday i believe going to congress and u.s congress and essentially asking to be regulated by the government which is a first when uh, when did you ever have a company asking the government to regulate it what do you think about this let me know in the comments below and since we're on the topic of OpenAI and Sam Altman, let's talk about their open source model. OpenAI is planning to release its first open source model. Yes, more details can be found in the information of this uh, report that I'm linking here in the description as well. There, there is a paywall, but here's basically the gist of it. There's a shift in approach. OpenAI's discussion to launch an open source model is a significant change from its previous closed approach. Now, why would that be? Does it have to do with the success of uh, Stability AI, for example? And as we speak of this, the motive, OpenAI obviously would benefit from the rapid progress that we have seen in the open source large language models uh, as of recently. And they're all based on Meta's Yes, Facebook slash Metas leaked LLAMA, LAMA model. Okay, so actually uh, Meta is behind a lot of the open source large language model market right now. OpenAI also would want to protect GPT-4 from competitors as DALI was surpassed by open source rival Stable Diffusion. Although the open source model will be less powerful than GPT-4, it could still drive incredible innovation. And you know, the more competition, the better, whether it's open or closed source. Are you on the open source team or the closed source team? Let me know in the comments below. The exact launch Launch for OpenAI's um, open source model is yet unknown, but I'm sure in the coming days we'll know more about that. And now let's dive into a few more noteworthy AI news and tools that have caught my attention recently. First off, we have Amazon's conversational search experience. Yes, Amazon is working on enhancing its online store by incorporating a conversational search experience. How does it look like? Is it basically just an Alexa online that you can ask on what to get? Well, this feature will allow users to interact with the platform a little bit more in an engaging and intuitive way, making it a little bit easier to find the products that you're actually looking for, even the ones that you're not looking for and 
you never knew you needed. Quora, the question platform's CEO, Adam D'Angelo, and his AI chatbot platform, Poe, has opened its API to developers. Now, this move will allow developers to access and integrate the platform's capabilities into their own applications. So some of you remember Quora, the big platform where you could just ask questions and uh, get answers from everyone. Uh, Poll has gained the attention for its powerful chatbot capabilities because of all the data that they have. And its API release has the potential to drive further innovation in the chatbot space. On that note, I actually think that a lot of platforms that have all those data feeds and data, um, well, all these mountains of data, such as Quora, but also others, Reddit, who knows, they might close their data access at some point and make people and AI models pay for the access. What do you think about that? Next up, let's talk about Samsung and Naver's AI collaboration. Tech giants Samsung and Naver have joined forces to develop a corporate generative AI platform that could rival ChatGPT. Now, this partnership will definitely leverage both companies' experience in AI to create a powerful platform that can be utilized across various industries. So keep your eye on this collaboration to see how it shapes the future of AI applications in business specifically. And now let's talk about Cloudflare's AI security controls. To help businesses protect their data while using generative AIs, Cloudflare has launched a suite of security controls. Now these controls will enable businesses to maintain data privacy and security without compromising the benefits of AI technology. In business especially, it's very difficult to make use of a lot of those tools because you're basically giving out proprietary data in order to work with these models. So that might be a, a good solution right there. Let's see how it develops. And I briefly mentioned this before that Sam Altman went to Congress and basically begged Congress to regulate AI. We also have former Google CEO Eric Schmidt that has expressed his belief that AI regulation should be established by technology companies rather than policymakers. Personally, I think this might be a little bit of a better approach, but let's see where we go. Who do you trust more, the government or the big tech companies? Schmidt basically argues that tech companies possess a deeper understanding of AI fact and that are better equipped to develop guidelines that foster innovation while mitigating potential risks. And I have to say, logically, it makes sense. However, do I trust big corporations? Or government or maybe we should just have it all for everybody who knows so that wraps up this week's ai update don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments below on the eu ai act who should be regulating ai corporations governments or nobody what do you think about OpenAI's open source move and as always if you found this video informative please hit that ai like button subscribe and leave your thoughts in the comments below thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one